So far we talked about Linprog solver, MATLAB zone solver, and we talked about GLPK solver. Now I'll talk about Groovy solver. Do we really need another solver if we have GLPK solver? And the answer is yes. Because, well, for many genome scale problems, GLPK is okay, it can function, but for a number of them, GLPK will give error. <clears throat> you know, GLPK was not developed by a professional team. Uh, so, in our research, we prefer to use Groby Solver. Groby is actually a commercial solver, but it is free for the academy, academic people. <clears throat> so for academic research, you can install it for free. Otherwise, you need to pay to use it. So there is a professional team behind. That's why it is uh, much more robust and much more powerful. Uh, it can solve the problems that cannot be solved by GLPK. So if you go to the Groby website, you will see that uh, there's a MATLAB version. There are other versions for Groby, for example. There is Python version, there is R version. So first you need to register for an academic license. Then you can uh, download, install the MATLAB version of Groby using the given instructions. And then again, by using set path in MATLAB, you can introduce Groby to MATLAB. One uh, difference compared to GLPK and Groby is that Groby accepts a single input in structure format. So rather than defining S, L, B, U, B separately, separating by comma like this, which was the case in Limprog and uh, GLPK. You need to define all those SLB, UB, etc. as a structure. So you should give a name, uh, model, let's say, model B. You should say model B, LB is equal to LB, model B, S is equal to S model b dot b is equal to b. So all required uh, variables needs to be grouped in a structure format with a main variable name. And these are the names Groby recognizes. So the stoichiometric matrix, the mass, let's say mass balance based constraints must be defined by A. So if you use MB, you should say MBA equals S. If you have originally defined your stoichiometric matrix as S. And LB, you be the same. And RHS, right hand side, it is our B. So you should define MB, right hand side, is equal to B. That ob is your objective function. If it, you defined it as f, you should say mb that ob is equal to b. And q is for, uh, I think, quadratic programming, what we define as h. And similar to GLPK, to tell that the variables are continuous or binary, you need to add this V type. So if all your variables are continuous variables, that's the case in our flux uh, based problems, you should define C uh, to tell that it, they are continuous. Then for the equations, 
you should use dot sense. And if they are equality, you should use this character. So if you have 10 equations in this dot sense, there will be 10 equations with equality character repeating. Then this is how you will run Groby. Your structure name, let's say MB, the main variable name, Groby, and the output. And the output is also in structure format. So you will get a main variable flux. If you print flux.x, it will give you flux vector. If you print flux.objual, it will give you the value of objective function. If you print flux.status, it will tell you if the problem was optimally solved or not. So, GLPK is also okay, but as I said, in some uh, genome scale metabolic model problems, it won't work. So, I strongly advise you to go install Groby and use Groby in your simulations from now on. That's okay if you still use GLPK. But as I said, in some cases, it won't work. So it's safer if you switch to Groby.